Hi guys, welcome to the pathology online class for pre-lab instruction. I think nakatake seven ako dito ngayon. So just bear with me. This is something different from the our previous classes. So what we are going to discuss today would be on the slides for the liver. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six slides for today. And starting with carbon tetrachloride poisoning, 12 to 24 hours. Carb, uh, that's slide number one. Slide number two is carbon tetrachloride poisoning, 12, uh, 24 to 48 hours. Slide number seven is submassive hepatic necrosis. Slide number 68 is chronic aggressive hepatitis. Slide 1 to 6, this is hepatic central hemorrhagic necrosis. And slide 34 is alcoholic liver disease. Okay? So, kindly view the monitor. Okay. So, in the case, ako na lang ang transfer. And then, we are going to start. Slide number 1 is carbon tetrafluoride poisoning. So, we all know that carbon tetrachloride poisoning is a pathotoxin and it uh, causes damage by way of the cytochrome P450 metabolism with uh, the formation of reactive oxygen species. So, during the initial stage, the 12 to 24 hours, what we would see here would be the presence of reversible changes. So the reversible change would be the steatosis or lipid accumulation. This is characterized by microvesicular steatosis. As you can see, there would be the presence of lipid droplets that are very small and the nucleus would still be retained at the center. So this is a feature of microvesicular steatosis. Aside from that, you can also see the presence of inflammatory cells in the area. Okay? So that would be for slide number one. Slide number two is carbon tetrachloride poisoning uh, for uh, 24 to 48 hours after. So what would be characteristic here would be the presence of reversible and irreversible changes. So first step, we have the reversible change. So we have learned that microvesicular steatosis would occur. So identified with the presence of lipid droplets. Okay, these are the lipid droplets. But this time, the nucleus would be pushed to the periphery, such as this one. So this is now what we call as macrovesicular steatosis. Aside from that, we would appreciate the presence of irreversible change. So this is an uh, acidophil body, also called an apoptotic body. You have the shrinkage of the entire cell with retention of a very small portion of the nucleus. This is what we call as hypnosis. Okay. We also would identify another type of cell death. We have necrosis. You still have the, the retention of the, the cell size, but there would be the fragmentation of the nuclei, which we would call as karyorexis. So that's for carbon tetrachloride poisoning 24 to 48 hours. Let's now go with slide number seven. Uh, slide number seven is what we call a submassive hepatic necrosis. So this is a little bit difficult slide. Um, what we would see would be the presence of uh, viable hepatocytes and non-viable hepatocytes. How do we differentiate them? So as what we have learned with uh, the first, uh, the first, uh, uh, the second chapter in Robbins, the dead cells would be identified with asinophilia of the cytoplasm. And of course, we have the absence of the nuclei. So th those are the things that we have to look for. So by the way, class, submassive hepatic necrosis would be associated 
with also with uh, acute liver failure because we have massive hepatic necrosis in those areas and this is associated with drug toxicity with hepatitis virus and autoimmune hepatitis okay so now we go back to the, to the slide okay so we look for we look for asymphilia so that's how we are going to find those dead cells so just bear with me so here you would see the presence of cetosis okay so this one. so i think this is an area with with hepatocyte necrosis You can compare. Uh, this one would be the normal. Uh, this would be the normal. This would be the abnormal area. You still see the retention of the nuclei in these portions. You would see some of the cells to have absence of the nuclei. Some would still be present, but I think because of the eosinophilia, these are uh, evidences of decrease in basophilic chromatin which is a sign of karyolysis so this is beginning karyolysis okay so again this is submassive hepatic necrosis now we turn to slide number 68 so slide number 68 is labeled as chronic aggressive hepatitis now, why is it called chronic against aggressive hepatitis is that because you may be looking at these lobules and you might be wondering maybe these are lobulated aggregates of regenerated or regenerating hepatocytes found in cirrhosis so in this case this is still not cirrhosis that's why i think this is called aggressive hepatitis and you have the hallmarks of hepatitis which is one, you have the hepatocytes that show the enlargement of the entire cell with ballooning degeneration, having a fibrillary or granular appearance of the cytoplasm. So this is the ballooning degeneration. And you also have the presence of inflammation at the periportal areas. So this is what we call as the bridging. Uh, necrosis because of the inflammation and you have bridging fibrosis if you're going to look at the high power view you would see the presence of this uh, fibers so this is bridging fibrosis so chronic aggressive hepatitis we can see it in viral infections even in autoimmune uh, although in autoimmune hepatitis we have to look for plasma cells okay and then uh, hepatitis would also be seen in, in drug toxicity. Next, we have slide 126. This is hepatic central hemorrhagic necrosis. So, I'll try to view the slide in the scanner. So, what you would notice here is that there are uh, patchy, patchy areas bearing. Uh, this one would be darker, then this would be the lighter. Uh, this is uh, a feature of chronic passive congestion of the liver. And this is attributed to a right-sided heart failure or a right cardiac, right cardiac decompensation. Grossly, this would be identified as nutmeg liver, wherein you have alternating patterns of light and dark areas. Um, this is, uh, in this case, we have the darker areas attributed to the normal looking liver cells. But actually, if we're going to, uh, to correlate it with the gross findings, it would be that the darker areas would correspond to the areas of hemorrhage, like in this case. So this would be the viable hepatocytes. This would be the areas of hemorrhage. 
and necrosis. So type of hemorrhage here, a type of necrosis here would be coagulative necrosis. So again, this is hepatic central hemorrhagic necrosis. Our last slide for today is slide 34. This is alcoholic liver disease. So, in alcoholic liver disease, if uh, you go over with the book, we have three phases for, for alcoholic liver disease. Number one is steatohepatitis or, uh, or hepatic steatosis. Number two is alcoholic hepatitis. Number three is steatofibrosis. So, in this particular slide, you would appreciate all of the three phases to be present. So, what's number one? We have steato, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have alcoholic steatosis, the presence of this uh, lipid uh, accumulation or fatty change. And then number two would be the alcoholic hepatitis. So there are three features for alcoholic hepatitis. Number one would be presence of ballooning degeneration of hepatocytes. And then you have presence of neutrophilic infiltrates. And then lastly, you have the malonidank bodies. The malonidank bodies would be would appear as eosinophilic uh, accumulations of cytokeratins 8 and 18. And these are malonidank bodies. Okay. And the last feature, the last phase would be steatofibrosis. So if you're going to to move around the slide, you would identify the presence of this fibrotic stalk. Okay? So this is alcoholic liver disease. Okay? So kindly read on your books for further study. So stay safe guys. Good night.